Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second episode of the Red Force podcast, the only podcast for the hardcore One Piece community. Hardcore. My name is uh, Eric Tolato. I'm your host. Joining me today is Mr. Christian Tolato. Hello. Uh, today on the One Piece podcast, we'll be talking about more of a retrospective on Sanji on Skypea. Uh, we already covered the latest chapter. It's Offici- officially out today in English today. We thought we'd do a little bit of a break special, as it were. Yeah. I believe there's a chapter scheduled next week, yes? Yes, we are back. So One we'll Piece be, is back. We'll be doing a, a chapter review, as it were, next week. Yes. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, support the official release. Yes, support the official release. Japanese or English, but make sure you support it. You want to support Odo as much as possible, and we'll uh, be reviewing his work today. But before we get into the nitty gritty, Christian, how's your One Piece a week been? One Piece week, pretty relaxing. Nothing yeah. much is going on. Everyone's been taking time off. Pretty quiet. New Year. Chapter break, you know. That's I it. Don't, do you want me to go on a rant about Crunchyroll? I don't know that you do. I mean, give it, give us your thoughts on Crunchyroll, Christian. Cause Man, I just want to watch... Well, One Piece episode on Sunday, and I can't be done. Three yeah, hours, well, delayed. Dragon Ball Super breaks Crunchyroll every Sunday. Fix your stuff, man. I pay for the service. Fix your service. Yeah. Crunchyroll. I'm trying to support... I'm sort of trying to support you. Uh, just, you give, me, give me this crap. Just so that, how is the One Piece anime travelling? Whole cake old has been pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, as an animation graduate... I would say that the animation has improved quite drastically yeah, since yeah, Dress yeah. Rosa. It's, it's looking nice, you know. I'm not a fan of changing styles every every frame, but, you know, it's decent. That's just the way it is. I mean, they got a new director in for Whole Cake. Yeah. So you can really see the improvements with the anime. Yeah, it's very good. It's not very good, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's decent. It's, de- it's, it's, it's watchable, at least. Uh, where are they up to at the moment, Christian? They, um... Where are they? They're doing a whole bunch of filler fights. Right. So we're in between that stage where Luffy just escaped the prison book. And that's right. The Cream Brothers have made the return. C- C- Cadenza and... Costanza. Yeah, Costanza. Yep. And the others. Can't remember what the fuck they're called. Cream Punch. There's a flashback in this episode about the Cream Punch. I don't know why he's so obsessed with his Cream Punch. Mate, the Cream, bro- the cream Brothers are where it's at, they're right? Strong- they're stronger than Opera for some reason. Which Opera's, is crazy. Opera's uh, real strange, but you know what? Let's uh, move into the first topic. Uh, Skypea. We call this part... The part where we talk about whatever we want when there's no chapter. Let's go. Alright, Christian. So, during the week, in about three or two days, I reread or read for maybe the first time Skype here. Mm-hmm. I knew the events in my head, you know, watch anime here and there, knowledge from you across the years, but... we're just I've just written a few notes, and you can find these notes on uh, Twitter... Uh, hashtag Skypea Secrets. And I really... Skypea Secrets. The, the volumes are uh, marked Skypea, but it really starts at the end of Alabaster. Where is it, like nine volumes? Yeah. Pretty much. It's about nine volumes. It's long. So we start with uh, chapter 217. Now, everyone's talking about Pal in a big joke. We only find out he's, uh, he's alive in a cover story way later. It's foreshadowed pretty... But it is yeah. foreshadowed extraordinarily heavily at the end of Alabaster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chaka says, I can't cry for you, pal. I wonder why that is. And then the next page, a mysterious figure gets out of the hospital and the doctor's like, you forgot your headband and it's pal's headband. It's pretty obvious as well. So, you know. That's post arc. That, like, that's, yeah. We might find out Pedro's alive post arc. And you know... We move on to, you know, one of the... I'm, I'm going to say I enjoyed Jaya extraordinarily much because it's it's really a lot of... It's really a Zoark, if you think about it. Yeah, it's two volumes. 
volume and a half or so, yeah. it sets up a lot about the world, about future events. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Bellamy is, you know, really hated. And I can see why people hate him so much now. He's just a piece of, like, he's I mean, a piece of shit. His dream... He's he just doesn't, a weak piece he, of shit. He doesn't like dreams, but his dream is to join the Doflamingo Pirates or be admired by Mingo. He just, wants to, like he just wants to be a lackey. Yeah. Uh, we start with the Straw Hats seeing a ship fall out of the sky. Yes. Very entertaining. Uh, they go to salvage it, and we see a picture that... The famed picture. Sanji sees. Now, of course, it's impossible that it's his actual mother because this ship's 200 years old, deduced by Robin. Yes. But I think it's a nice foreshadowing to maybe... Sora. Sora. It kind of looks like her, but not really. No, uh, yeah. Just a blonde woman. A lot of triple dots going on. Yeah. Anyway, these the monkey the monkey salvage unit comes in. Do you, do you reckon Oda had... Sure. Do you reckon Oda had Sanji's backstory nailed down? Completely? Yes, because... S- Slightly after this, they talk about Nolan, and he's like, yeah, I'm from the West Blue. We've got the Miss Prince evidence as well. I think he thought about it a while ago. You reckon he had it all locked down, though? Or do you reckon he... I reckon he knew quite a bit. Maybe not exactly how the Gemma works, but he yeah. was probably thinking, you know, royal family, that kind of thing. Mm. Anyway, we hit... But first, I want to talk about something else. SBS in the volume... Oda states that he thinks he mostly resembles Shanks. Now, we all know Shanks is, is just the God King of the verse. This is a God King. And Oda thinks he most resembles Shanks, the author of the, of, the, of the book. Thoughts on that? So clearly, Shanks is smart. Shanks is level-headed. Shanks is strong. He's also a little bit goofy. Yeah, like, he knows how to have a, fun. He knows how to party. Fun I've noted here in... Um, you know, slightly after Sky Pier, there's that scene where uh, Shanks is like, let's go to Whitebeard. Yeah. And I can see Luffy being like this at 40 or so. Because he's like, yeah, don't worry about the Navy. We got them covered. We, we Let's see them try their best, that kind of thing. Hmm. And, he's, and he says to Rockstar, you know, don't worry about it. You tried your hardest. You, you put in your effort. So he's a loved, he's a loved captain and... Um, Speaking of Shanks, there's a bar scene with Bellamy that's famous. Not quite as famous as other scenes, but... It's a pretty important scene. It's an important scene because it reflects Luffy's constitution for his dream. Mm-hmm. And also Zoro for his dream. And they, and they believe... And they believe in Luffy. In, in dreams as well. Yeah. It also is a nice mirroring to the first bar scene with Shanks, how yeah. he doesn't fight back. Well, until his friends become in danger, such as Luffy. Well, Nami tells them not to fight. Yeah. They make the promise. Nami's also extraordinarily upset when they don't fight. Acting exactly like Luffy when he was a child. Almost one for one. Yes, but... Do you think they would have fought them if Nami didn't make him promise that they wouldn't fight? I think Luffy was kind of thinking about his constitution and his dreams. I don't know if the promise was a big deal because he's probably thinking we're better than these. We don't need to fight them. We've already beaten them with our ideology. I think Zoro would have fucking wrecked them. Zoro was ready to go and Luffy's like, don't. Yeah. And this shows Luffy's, you know, strength as a captain. Uh, he's willing to, you know, fight for his dream, but he knows when he's been someone already by not even touching them. Bellamy's, Bellamy's just a sad unit. Be- Bellamy's such a... He's such a piece of shit. Like, he's that guy that no one likes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just want to talk briefly before we enter Jai. We see Van Orga of the Blackbeard Pirates snipe a seagull far, far away out of the distance from Jaya. Uh, Usopp uh, can't believe the distance. And uh, it's a very impressive feat for Van Orga. Mm-hmm. He doesn't kill them, he notes, with one shot. He's disappointed in that. He only wounds the birds. Yeah. But, you know, decent. We see the other Blackbeard pirates. Burgers, you know, challenging people being a standard Burgers. I like how this is kind of set up as well. We don't know who these people are. Mm. We, it's kind of set up there like Jai's a scumbag town full of pirates. And, uh, you know, we see Doc Q being weird. What's the deal with Doc Q? 
He's kind of like the old witch kind of See, weird going on. One Piece feels like a video game sometimes. Yeah. Where you have like these classes of fighters. Yeah. You got your brawler, you got your swordsman, you right. got your sniper. Yeah. You got your like weird witch doctor thing. Yeah. It's just, it, Oda clearly taken influence from RPGs. Right. And he does only one thing that maybe can we, we can, can deduce his abilities. He has this apple bag. And it's kind of, he kind of is all, he always talks about luck. Yeah. He's he's a very, he's a man about luck. He always talks about how Luffy's a very lucky boy. And, uh. What, some sort of luck for Luffy, no, I'm not saying, but he's, he's all about luck and it, it appears Blackbeard's all about fate. And Van Orga backs Blackbeard up, but, um, Burgess is kind of like, what are you doing? Let's fight. Yeah. What do you mean by luck? So, I think the Blackbeard Pirates are kind of all about fate and determination and luck and dreams. Do you think uh, Doc Q has like a Hawkins fortune teller thing going on? I don't think so. I think he just tests people's luck, kind of like Two-Face. Because he gives okay. Luffy an apple, he eats it. But yeah. But it doesn't do anything to him and the other apples explode. Okay. So it seems like his deal is always testing fate or testing luck. Uh, anyway, we move on to Blackbeard's speech. Now, Christian, what do you want to say about Blackbeard's speech? Very important to One Piece. It's, very, it's a very important speech, which is weird, because it comes from a villain. Yeah. I think Blackbeard is the... Is Luffy, but on the other side of the coin. He's Luffy, he's the but he's willing... Luffy. He's, he's Luffy, but he's willing to do whatever it takes to become Pirate King. Right. Including, like, screwing people over. So he's an evil Luffy. He's more cunning yeah, Luffy. He's more cunning Luffy, yeah. Right. Um, I just want to note the the um speech is very important, but what is said after the speech maybe gives us clues about Blackbeard and his uh Delfruit abilities. Or his his weirdness. Yeah, it, about his body specifically, it's said let me just find it here. Uh Luffy and Zoro state that it's not just one guy, there's more than one of him. Nami can't see this, so it might be something to do with their observational skills or the spiritual skills. It's weird, because Luffy and Zoro agree with each other. Yeah, that there's more than one of him. And Nami has no idea what what, what they're talking about, yeah. nor does the audience. I remember in Marine Ford, Marco states that his, his body's, body's always weird. been weird. I... So... Because Blackbeard's always eating, right? Yeah. Do you think his stomach... I always assume... I assume that he has two stomachs. Yeah, but th- does that... I think or the something? way it's set up in Jai, it's something more... Mystical. Mystical, spiritual even. Like, they can sense... Like, he's got double nature Yeah, and there's like three or four panels of him just kind of walking alone in the crowd. Hmm. Kind of like, what's... What's, 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 what's with, with this, guy? this guy? I don't think it's... Maybe it's... It's probably physically with his body, but maybe a more spiritual element than a straightforward stomach element. People think it's a, it's his rings, but I don't it might think that's be true. it might be a thing. It's like he believes it in the in good things, but he also believes in bad things. Right. So there's two of so them. So he's good. He's both good and evil. So there's there's two of the same guy. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. It might be that. Who knows? Blackbeard's weird. Something to think about. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to uh, Buggy being weird. Buggy's trying to find Captain John's treasure. As always. But he's on the ship first and Ace turns up. And Buggy says something interesting, which I don't think is really reliable based on this early in the story that, you know. Yeah, Buggy. Let me just get the Buggy quote. Be trusted? Let me just get the quote here. You know, the only man who's ever fought Gold Roger and lived. Uh, I think it's interesting because we know Garp and Roger fought. Yes. All the time. Yes. So, whatever. We know Big Mum and Roger met. I th- so, I don't know what this means. It's probably just like a timeline issue. Like, I, yeah. everything's the strongest until something else is the strongest. Yeah, everything's the strongest until it's not. Yeah, I'll get to uh, Inaru in a minute, but... You know, it's stated that Robin's like, 
the Rumble Rumble Fruit is the strongest Logia. Logia. Until something else is the strongest Logia. I mean, Blackbeard says his Logia is the strongest. Yeah, it's all conjecture. But do but, we believe him? You know, I don't want to... So much. As it's not. It's not. It's, it's not, not a stated level of power. In, it's not stated in an SBS yeah. or by Oda. It's stated by characters. Yeah. So it's up for interpretation. Yeah, and we move on to chapter two, three, three. Maybe one of the hypest chapters back to back of three, three, and three, four. The Navy are freaking out because Whitebeard and Blackbeard are gonna Whitebeard Red and Shanks. Shanks are gonna meet, and yep. you know. The Goro say state Shanks could do a lot of damage, and don't say anything about Whitebeard. That's true. They don't. They only, they only note Shanks's strength, not Whitebeard's strength, which is interesting. You, you think, think that's because he's sick? I think the Goro say are like are implying that Shanks could do a lot of damage to Whitebeard. That's what I think they're saying. That's what you think they're saying. Yeah. Or Shanks could do a lot of damage in in the general sense because I mean, they're freaking out because they're like let's prepare because two Yonko are gonna meet. I mean Shanks is the god king, so obviously Shanks would win in that fight. Shanks is the god king, yeah. yeah. Um, interesting that this is pretty early. Gorosei integral to the story. I'm not sure the first time we see them, probably after Alabaster, right? I think this is the first time we see them. Yeah, because they, they talk about Luffy, they're like, don't worry about Luffy, he's not really a big issue. Yeah. We see them multiple times over the story. Thoughts about the Gorosei in general? What do you What do you think they're doing? They're kind of like the puppet master, I assume. Right. They sort of get everything together. Yeah. They move pieces around. Yeah. They're kind of shady, secret Illuminati. Shady, like they run the government. Is what they do. Or are they the like the no. link to the government and the celestial dragon? Yeah. They, I'm pretty sure they keep the Celestial Dragons at bay. Right, they make them happy. They make them happy. Do you think the Celestial Dragons know, like, the, of their existence, or are they kind of like the shadow, kind of, we run everything, and the Celestial Dragons think they run everything? How deep does this go? I think go? the Elder Stars... Right. ...represent the Gorosei's interests. Yeah. Do we think the ex-Marines, ex cp Zero, what's going on? I mean, they have to be Celestial Dragons themselves, surely. Mm. They don't look like Celestial Dragons, though. They don't have the they typical... Don't have the suit. They don't have the typical space suit going on. Maybe they maybe they don't want to wear that shit. Right. Do you think that they're, like, ex-old school... Like, after Kong's done with his position, is the next higher position of Gorosei? Like, do you think that... Is that how it works? Well, or is it just kind of like, you're appointed Gorosei by the Celestial we see, Dragon? We see the Gorosei Rob's flashback. Yeah. And they haven't aged. At all. So the well, how long though? Twenty issues? No, ten. No, way more. She's eight. It's like and she's thirty, 30 now, isn't she? She's like thirty six now. So it's like she's twenty. Not thirty six. She's thirty. Thirty. So it's about twenty years. But yeah, about twenty years. I mean, they're all guys. Whatever. Yeah, but it's like twenty years. Yeah. They haven't. The character design does not change at all. Yeah, which is even close for Oda, because he likes to put beards on people after time skips. That's <laughs> true. Everyone gets a beard. Yeah. And a six pack. Yeah. So Gorosei could be immortal. We might touch on the Gorosei on a later episode. Yeah, maybe in World's Worst Theories, because there's a lot of stupid theories out there on the Gorosei. Yeah, but anyway, um, you know, it's stated that, you know, Shanks, he, he thinks the Gorbachev looking dude, the one with the scar on his head, top mm. of the head, he, he says Shanks isn't about uh, conquest over the seas. No, he's not. So that's interesting to take note. Um, and then we move on to something that's very tasty. Three, four. Now, people, if I told you the next chapter of One Piece would have Shanks, Mihawk, Doflamingo, Kuma, Sengoku, Blackbeard, Whitebeard, Margo, and Bed Beckman in it. It's fucking... What would you say to me in response to that? That's a crazy... That's a crazy... That's I, like one of the best posters. I think the community would lose their absolute minds oh. at any of those characters being in there. Maybe not Dorothy Mingo right now, but... May yeah, but still. That maybe still. Maybe because, you know, what's going on with him? Has he escaped Impal Down yet? He's one How are you going to keep Mingo in Impal Down? The Puppet Master. How are you going to keep him in Impal Down? Mate, stupid. He's going to manipulate Hannibal with his words. He doesn't even need to touch him. Yeah. Pff. Hannibal, chump. He's going to break out of them in like a, a week. He's, he's probably out. already broken out. Yeah, he's already he's loose. 
I'm Mingo gonna s- is loose. Do you reckon in the post arc we'll see Mingo just out? I reckon or he's, being broken out by the celestial dragon. He would be or reading the newspapers. He'd be like, "Yes." Yeah, looking at Luffy, laughing, that yeah. kind of thing. Um. So. I just yeah. So after this, we kind of we meet cricket. Cricket. We meet. We hear about Nolan. Nolan's dreams. very important to the story. Nolan. The history of One Piece is touched upon here again, four hundred years ago. You know, Jaya went into the sky, the Shandori, the Eldorado, Lost City of Gold. I found this very interesting because this arc kind of starts with the crew poor. And the reason why they want to go to Sky Island is, for, get a, is for an adventure, but also for money, for treasure, for gold. Where once peace used to be Luffy's, about treasure. Luffy's very interested in gold. Zoro is very interested in gold. Yeah, it's Sanji, weird. I mean, Nami, of course, is interested. It's Sanji's w- kind of whatever. It's weird, because like... First part of the story, Luffy's actually wants treasure. Yeah, he's always about treasure. He's not really like, I'm going to surpass you, I'm going to be the strongest. He's always like... Let's get treasure. Let's have a look at treasure. And I, f- I found it refreshing, and it kind of reminded me what One Piece is about. It's a pirate story. It's an adventure surely pirate story. Surely there's treasure. So anyway, they find out about, you know, the Lost City, the Nox Stream. Um, the Mon- well, they, they, their needles, their... Yeah, they're, the needle's they're, pointing up, so they're... Yeah, it's pointing up, they're like, what's going what's on? What's going on, yeah, yeah. Um, they get... You know, a lot of stuff happens. Bellamy tries to steal... Steals a gold statue. Luffy fucks up Bellamy. Broom gets point. Um, again, mirrors the bar scene with Shanks, exactly. You know, Shanks is all fine and dandy until, until he touches you friends. Until he touches friends, he fucked Cricket up. Do we think the Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc family are going to relate to Usopp... Uh, in a more substantial way in his arc. Do we, Do you think Cricket's do you think, coming back? Do you think Usopp's a Mont Blanc? No, not necessarily a Mont Blanc, but it seems like the Mont Blanc Nolan, Nolan story, story line is connected to Usopp very much so. Yeah, it, it, it'll be... I think it'll be a big part of Albaf. Because we, we saw Nolan again in... Um, Just Rosa. Green Bay, yeah. Beard. We, didn't, we didn't get a big flashback like Probably in Probably the Emerald City. Right, yeah. but... Do we think? Do we think Nolan is far more important than people give him credit for in the history of One Piece? Talking about four hundred years ago instead of the voice century. I think he's important for. Do you think Nolan uncovering secrets? Do you think Nolan knew about the Poneglyphs? Do you think that was his adventure, his quest, or was he just trying to explore the Grand Line? I just think he wanted to find. Just find he's an things. explorer. He yeah. just wants to he's explore. A botanist. Yeah, yeah. The I, w- I find myself. I knew about Nolan. I understood what he was about, but I found myself loving the Mont Blanc family in general, because their their whole thing is about following your dreams, and that's kind of what One Piece is about. Yeah, pretty much. And it aligns with the crew perfectly. Mont Blanc, um, cricket. He's a good character. People forget about him. But... To be fair, he's pretty forgettable. He's pretty forgettable, but, like... He worries about the Straw Hats. He cares about the Straw Hats. He's a good uh, dude, yeah. He's a good dude. I I want to see him return in some fashion. Now, me reading this arc... Oh, yeah, where like, is he going to return? I'm not sure where he's going to return. Maybe, again, when they talk about Nolan or something, or, like, a myth. But is it too late for this kind of things in One Piece? I think Albaf's the last chance. The last mythical... Yeah, crazy myth adventure. chance. Yeah. Because after Luffy rang... And the, then Raph of course. Is Nolan still a liar? Because people surely saw Luffy in the sky and rang the bell. What? And the bell now rings every day. Yeah. So do we think Nolan's name will eventually well, be clear? They... So you think Usopp will clear... No one's name. Yeah, I think Usopp's role to become a great warrior to see, but like, kind of his side quest is to prove Nolan, prove was, Nolan right. was right. Because it kind of happens in, because he's kind of like the surrogate to Nolan and Dressrosa for the Tontata people. Yeah. So will he um, spread Nolan's message or his myths? Because Sanji also knows about Nolan heavily. Yeah, because we... So we might get him and... We might get Usopp and Sanji talking about Nolan eventually. Nice callback in Whole Cake to 
Sanji actually reading Nolan and the Delphi book. Oda doesn't fuck around. It's he very already, good. Oda knows where to put the hints. Before they leave, they also Sanji also mentions that he's from the West Blue. West Blue, yes. So, and he says it was an arduous journey to cross the red line, but he doesn't want to talk about it. So yeah. that's all fine and dandy. Uh, we get, you know, the monkeys repair the ship, make Sunny into a nice flying machine. We get boosted up into Sky Pier by the Nox stream. Yes. And it... I'm not going to say Sky Pier starts slow. Kind of does, though. But it's... It's the classic One Piece deal where it's like we get to a new island, look at the environment, look yes. how look how Painting nice texture. this environment is, look at all these animals. And I have to say, the art in this arc art is, is very good. So good. It's I would say it's the best art Oda's ever done. It's pretty good. It's a lot of detail. Incredible. It's crisp, it's detailed, clean. The action's fantastic. Yeah. All the lightning effects from Anna are goddamn brilliant. They're good. I would say Enter Reforming is a bit rough, but other than that, it's it's beautiful work. Yeah. So we land, you know, we get this weird ass toll gatekeeper chick, kind of ominous, going, you know, you can pay if you want, but you don't have to. I'm not the judge of this yeah. island. And you know, we were talking uh, two weeks ago now about whole cake and people's issues with um, seducing woods. Seducing woods. Same situation kind of happens here. Does Luffy... Has Luffy always had a fascination with bugs? Because he seems to know a lot about insects in this arc. Well, Talking about stag beetles, this kind of beetle, this kind of bug. I think it's just a... It's a thing in Japan where kids collect bugs. Bug catching. There's a lot of bug catching. Yeah. Okay. They also go get the South Bird. Now, I was talking to Christian about this and the... Animals to get the raftel might be important. Yes. Um, because you can't tell actual Direction. north, south, east, west on the Grand Line, mm. and they need the South Bird to find the Nox Stream. Yes. So the way that raftel set up at the moment, we know it's going to be a cross shape, and Christian was informed me or reminded me that Nami's. Um, navigation tool shows yeah. three islands the pose, and the, the danger. universal pose. Do we think that's going to be used or do we think something, uh, some other tech will be used to find Raftel or its direction? Well, the polar glyphs have specific directions on them, the road ones, right? Yeah, so do you think it's like turn left here, go this much? Well, they point to islands, right? So yeah, what, and the middle, the middle I assume, is... I assume what you have to do is you have to have a map and, and you get all the it. points, and you cross the points, and yeah. it's rafter. But if you're on the map, right, hey, how are hey. you going to know north, south, east, and west? Star charts? Star charts. Do, do star, star charts haven't been a thing yet. I mean, face. they should be. They definitely should it's be. Navigation. That's how it's navigation it's how works. navigation works on the sea. It's not a big deal, but it's something to think about. You know, it's, it's, interesting, it's yeah. interesting how they get the whole cake. We think it's... Peckham's. Peckham's. Knows where it is. Pickup knows where it is. It's kind of like mink sense kind of deal. Pretty sure they get there because of Peckham's. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we kind of land. We talk to the villagers. You know, we find new tech. A little bit of uh, a lot, actually, of dial information. Yeah. I would say a little bit. I don't want you to know about these dials. Too much dial information. It's kind of, it's very important. It's a power for Usopp and a power for Nami eventually. And kind of fleshes out the tech in One Piece. Yeah, the crazy fantasy tech. I'd love this kind of information for Haki, eventually. We're never going to get that. Guys, seriously, it's like three chapters of them explaining what dials are. We're never going to get that much detail. And then during during the arc, it's like, this dial does this, and it's like, yeah, we, we know. Well, ha- I, just, I don't think I just fleshed out Haki and in sp- his own mind. Speaking of Haki, this is kind of the first time we see it with the mantra. Yeah. Usa, um, Zoro's intrigued, Luffy's intrigued, Sanji's intrigued. Mm. So, we kind of meet the Shandori early, and it's kind of like, what's going on with this Wiper character? Why is he so annoying? Why is he He's, angry? He is very annoying. He's very annoying and very angry. And we come to find out that uh, Gandor, the ex-Kami, he's trying to do his best to fulfill his requirements. But yeah. You know, Wipers like, I want my land back. 
Yeah. And Gandalf's like, we can't do it because we've been using this land for 200 years. It's a part of Skypean culture. So it's it's a message about colonialism. Yeah. Gan- Gandor is v- trying very hard to make peace, but he can't do it. Um, Wiper's not listening. I love how Odo doesn't really take a... He doesn't take a position on colonialism. He just shows both sides. He does, but it kind of settles on peace at the end with the Shandor and the Skypeans being cool and Gandalf yeah, but like, becoming the Kami again. No one... that That's a good message. But like, it's not like Shandorans get their land back. Well, specifically the Shandoran elder is like, Gandalf, you're the right person for this job, not me. Yeah. So, and we'll get to the Nolan flashback, but it's kind of like... I think Otis saying that the we progression, should share land. The, the, no, the progression of society is better than super, superstition and that kind of thing, which kind of wraps up. It's kind of like the theme of Skype. I think you know, the gods versus tech. Yeah, is throughout the entire theme. So I want to talk about, um, you know, Sanji during this arc. We might get to that in the next section, but just a quick teaser. Very disappointing for Sanji in this arc. Everyone remembers the cool smoke. He's not even in the arc. Smoke he might scene. Well, he might as well not be in the arc. He gets shocked by uh, Enaru uh, pretty early on. Pretty early, and then everyone remembers the "I need a light." Thanks for the yeah, light that, at the end. That's such a good, but, such a good panel, ladies and gentlemen. If so you rem- if you remember the arc, Sanji does a one named attack against the Concaster. Yeah, against the. Uh, Artery? Uh, Sortery, I think it is. Whichever fucking While Luffy's Artery holding brother. him. Yeah. Uh, previously, before this, he gets absolutely destroyed by an impact dial. Yep. Knocked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, he, you know, they defeat him. A lot of shenanigans on the boat. Uh, they get to the altar. Chopper gets a nice fight. Gandalf comes to save him. Sanji... The next time we see Sanji, he gets knocked out by Enaru. That's true. And then... The next time we see him, he goes up the beanstalk yep. and gets knocked out by Enaru. Meanwhile, Zoro's... Zoro does everything Zoro's in Zoro's fighting, you know, Ohm. He's fighting a, a legion of... Um, goons. Goons. He's fighting Wiper and the Snake all at the same time. And then he takes crazy, like three right? attacks from Enaru and still standing and then he gets knocked out. So, Zoro is pretty much the main character's arc. It's interesting that I think Oda sacrificed Sanji to flesh out Chopper in this arc. Because yeah, yeah. Chopper states that like he wants to become a real pirate and man up. And he takes on um, the dude, I forget his name, but the guy with um, the, the weird the boots. Phoenix bird thing. And he's got, yeah. And he's got like that weird hairstyle, kind of like um, the ninja. Oh, uh, Rizo. Rizo, yeah, Rizo. He's kind of with the same haircut. But it's kind is that of... Gamatsu? Yeah, Gamatsu. That's, that's Gamatsu? Yeah. yeah. He fights him, and it's kind of a gay fight. It's kind of a gay character, but it shows Chopper's growth as a fighter. Mm-hmm. Chopper used to actually do things. Yeah. post time skip. Interesting that Chopper... Chopper has been removed from that role, and Brook and... Br- oh, Frankie? Frankie have repra- replaced him. I kind of like Chopper's fighting style, though. I just, I just want to see yeah. him do things. I'm not a fan of Kung Fu Point. Oh, it's a bit yeah, weird. Yeah, I don't like Kung Fu Point. But, anyway, we're moving on. Um, yeah. The arc, as a whole, is interesting, because Luffy gets sidelined heavily in this, this arc. Is the, is, if I have one complaint about World Peace, is that the main character, Luffy, always gets stuck in something. Gets sidelined. He gets, sidelined, gets, gets in starts. jail. He gets in a giant snake. It's just to keep him out of the... It's too obvious. Now, this the snake is interesting. It's got a shitload of treasure in it. Mm-hmm. Luffy's trying to get out. Can't get out. That's kind of like the entire arc for Luffy. L- Luffy pretty much is in the snake the whole arc. Right. And then finishes off an L at the end. Yeah. The... I wouldn't... People love Anel for his villainry. Mm. I would say it's not the greatest reason to be a villain, other than to have kind of a god complex. He has a, it's 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 a cool god complex thing. His ability's cool. His design's funky, but it's cool. His design's yeah. cool. I'd say 
He's not my favorite villain, just because he's not. People love Enru. People love uh, Enru, but I would say. Reread read, read Skypea. He's. He's, he's very, kind of one note. He's he's a simple character. His reasons aren't given. We're not really given any details about his backstory. Uh, yeah, his we backstory. don't know much about him. I think than, he's. I think he's supposed to be like a force of nature. Yeah. Other than that, he's from a different island that he heard about Skypea and where the Kami come from, and I that's think, his dream. I think he's a Belkin. Yeah. Not sure. Anyway, we get a little bit of details about how the Skylands work. We know that we can get to Skypea via hopping from different Skylands to get there, mm-hmm. which is interesting. There's kind of a network in the sky. That's probably how Enru got there. Yeah, that's how he did get there. Yeah. Um, so, I'll just say that, like... You love Enru for his abilities and for what he's done, and the clips on YouTube about you know him one shotting the crow. Watching everyone, yeah. But just uh, re reread maybe the fight scene, maybe a couple of his introduction, and maybe take a reconsider. I'm not saying his uh, character's I, bad. I just he's fine. I like. He's him. fine. He's a good villain. I mean, I like. I'm gonna. Right, well, I like what? Crocodile better as yeah. a villain. Crocodile's a better villain. I like Dofaminko better as a villain. Yeah. Okay. Dovaminko has more about him. Yeah, I guess, yeah. And there's more true. of him. Of There's not much Enru in this arc. Yeah, because the, the theme takes precedent. Yeah. And his abilities are impressive, to say the least. He's a... His range is very large. Yes. And his lightning attacks were impressive for the time. They're still impressive. They're impressive, but they're not... They're not I like mean, he's, he's, his, final, his final lightning black ball attack. Yeah. I'll, I'll level destruction. He didn't need the clouds for that, though. He didn't need up yard for that. Yeah, but he's he's using the environment. Yeah. Anyway, we find out that Shandori's temple, the Eldorado City of Gold, is the upper yard itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's underneath kind of the cloud level. they got to dig down, and Robert finds it pretty early. Yeah. Uh, the big Pooba... Chief man fights Yama. Yama fights Robin. That's a good fight. I like that. Decent fight. fight for Robin. It's pretty cool. She's very, very annoyed that he's breaking, breaking all the ruins. The history. And I'd yeah. imagine Robin would take him out a lot quicker if she wasn't pro- trying to protect the ruins. She's trying real hard to protect the ruins. She's, she's kind of doing him. a judo thing where she's using his own weight against him. His own him. weight against him. Yeah. I like how Robin fights in this. It's like the uh, only Robin fight. It's pretty good. It's, it's great. I want to see more. I don't think we'll ever see Robin get a legitimate fight. Nah, Wano, Wano. Wano, we're going to get Everyone fights. Everyone keeps on Everyone's saying... Everyone's getting a fight in Wano. See, Wano's going to be the hypest thing on the planet. Re- rereading this arc kind of reminded me that maybe there's too many characters in One Piece now. Oh, that's definitely a thing. That's why the there's, crew split up. He splits up the crew in Skype here, but we get, you know, we get the, this crew, then we get that crew, then we get this yeah, crew. Yeah, he always does that, yeah. You know, Luffy's here, he's there... But we don't get these massive swaths of Sanji not being there or Zoro not being there. True. true to be true. fair, he sidelines Sanji the entire arc, so... Yeah, Sanji's you know. barely in this. But... It's disappointing, actually. It's interesting. Robin, very intrigued by the ruins. I mean, I'm guessing she had to get a fight because this is the first arc. Yeah, it's... And the she's crew, the crew the don't crew. really trust her still in this arc. They don't really know what she's about. They're getting to know her. Yeah, and... And I mean, that's Water Seven's job, right? Yeah, and the... It's interesting to see Robin kind of not really do... She goes on her own quest. Yeah. And doesn't really help the crew out directly. No. Um, now, the, we'll get to the Poneglyph in a minute and what it means and what Roger said. But we find out about... I want to talk about the flashback between Nolan and the Shindora... Kagura. Kal, Kalgara. Kalgara. Yeah, whatever. How you pronounce it, I don't know. Interesting flashback. I didn't realize Nolan's strength. He's very strong. He's pretty good. He's very, very, very strong. Cuts the uh, Kami snake up. Yes. Uh, Zoro never got a clean hit on this on the snake, so we don't know what's going on there. Could he? Is he capable at that point? Probably. It's a Probably? fucking snake. Yeah, but it's fucking massive. It is. Anyway, he holds his own against. Uh, well, they, they land on the island, it's raining, there's a disease, uh, Nolan stops a sacrificial offering to yeah. the gods. Um, they get in a fight, Pug yeah. is very upset, Nolan's like, I'll save the village, just give me a day. 
and then you can do what you like to me. Nolan gets trapped under rubble for a long time. Yeah. And Calgara is just kind of there, like, taunting him, being like, yeah, what do you know about the gods? Who are you to tell me what to believe? Mm. That kind of thing. And then Nolan says, you know, we've seen this plague before. Uh, I can save the entire village. Just do this. Yeah. And, you know, it all gets solved, and it's all good, and they become best friends. And I think the, uh, the flashback could have ended here, but we get an additional couple of chapters talking about the ancestor trees and why he cut them down. It's very important. It's important. Uh, is For the it... message of the arc. Yeah. It's about colonialism, really. This flashback's a little bit too long for me. Yeah, a lot of people did have a problem with it. Spe- it's not... It's long and the placement is really weird. Right It's right end. before right Luffy fights, like, beats Anel. Yeah. Anel. Or Inaru. And it's just like, this is seven, eight chapters. Weekly, it would have been torture. Yeah. I could only imagine the hate. Well, weekly would have been torture. That was going on. Yeah, people didn't... When this arc finished, people didn't like this arc. Yeah. It's only in retrospect people like it. Yeah. Why people, do you think, why I've, do you think, I've heard multiple times people saying to skip Skype here. Why do you think people didn't like this arc? Is it just pacing? Is it this flashback specifically? I think it has pacing issues. It's it's slow to it's start. Too, it's too long. It's way too long. It's good in the middle. Now, I'll say this. Everything's necessary. This arc isn't too long per se. It's maybe the wordiest arc I've seen. Hmm. Most of the panels very word heavy, a lot of speech bubbles. I think Oda was really trying to get a deep message across. Yeah, and he's he's trying. I think he succeeded pretty well. Yeah, he did, and he's also trying to explain as clearly as he can how the dials work and the yeah. tech, and trying to set up Haki at this. I point. I think he trusts his audience more these days to get what he's saying, but yeah, yeah. people still don't get it. So maybe we do need these explanation chapters. And, you know, there's a kind of a birdcage situation at the end, which is, I don't know, it's fine. It's only a couple of chapters. It's sort of... The birdcage is an annoying plot device. I found myself getting to volume 29, 30, being like, can we wrap this up? Yeah, it's it's a very long arc. It's a long, long... It's enjoyable, it's long, but there's not... Maybe it's different because I know the outcome, but was I threatened by Anel, I guess? His goons didn't really his threaten goons me at yeah, all. Yeah, his goons aren't impressive at all. Ohm's probably his best dude, and yeah. Zoro finishes him off pretty quickly. Mm. Um, so, the arc as a it's whole... It's good arc. It's, it's good. Very nice arc. People, I was the seeing... Art- so good. I was seeing on Twitter that people were saying top five arc... In One Piece. I think that's the hype taking over with Enro, to be honest. It's it's a really good arc with a good message. Oda, it's a philosophical... Yeah. Oda never answers the question, who's right? And I'll say this, Enro's way cooler animated than he is drawn. Oh, I don't know about that. You need the sounds, you need the Dragon Ball Z Kamahamaha sounds, you need the lightning crackling. It kind of loses its... It's punch Pose. and impact drawn. Because we know they're getting electrocuted, but his electrocution drawing is far better this arc in Whole Cake than it is in Skypea. Do you think so? Yes. it's He uses jewel turns heavily for his lightning now. Hmm. Before, it's not really that strong. It's not that strong. Yeah. His, his toning for his effects have gotten far better. I don't know about that. In reaction, his lighting effects have gone way better. I prefer Skypeer's lighting effects. Skypeer's... Me. When I talk about lighting effects, I'm talking about how the... The attacks the, are drawn. The attacks are not drawn, how the light affects the characters around them. Oh, uh, lighting. Lighting specifically on characters. It's... See... I don't... I don't believe the intensity of the electrocution... Yeah. In Skypeer, mm. but I do in Whole Cake Island... Because the tone. Because it's straight black tone. I, to be. Don't get me wrong. The crotch hatching in Sky PR is extraordinary. So beautiful. I have a theory about why Oda changes his art style in this arc, right? Yeah. Because it's in the sky. 
He wants a lighter feel because he wants to evoke the scenery with the art itself. So yeah. the line work is very thin. Yeah. It's very crisp, very airy almost. It is very And he airy. doesn't really use a lot of tone. He only uses cross hatching on, char- on characters. Cross hatching is right? very good, especially when like Wiper gets knocked out. His arms cooked. He got cooked. Sanji, Sanji the smoke cigarette. So scene. many lines, so much detail. It is beautiful. It's beautiful. It, you know why it's beautiful? Because you have that crisp, precise line work. Yeah. Mixed with heavy detailing. It's. His lines are. It's lot, amazing. His lines are a lot thinner in this in this yeah. arc. His line weight's a lot thinner, which I believe, is because of the setting. Right. Do you think? Would you prefer to see this style throughout One Piece? Or do you think it's too much time to spend? Well, what I prefer, what Odo Does. has time for is yeah. a completely different question. Would I prefer this art style throughout the entire One Piece? Yes, it's people, gorgeous. People say this and water, not Water 7, um, Fishman Island are the best looking arcs. Do you like Fishman Island? Art style was? Mm. Decent? It's decent. Yeah. People, people say Dressrosa end is probably the worst. It, get, it gets rough. It gets Dressrosa real end. rough. Yeah. I think arts improved dramatically after Dressrosa. Yeah, I always refreshed himself. Yeah, I think he got a little Lift little fatigue. tired with destroying the same settings and characters. I will say this about um, Skype here. There's like four or five entire double page drawings. But they're so good. They are very good. Credit to the background artists. Yeah. Another thing about Anel, he gets beaten and then he just leaves. <laughs> like, to the moon. It's like, alright, Luffy, you it's beat me. Like, it's you like beat, Poochie. You beat me, but, like, I'm gone. It's like Poochie. It's like, and then he flew to the moon. Yeah, it's, like, real weird. Oda's, it's a massive panel to the moon. Mm. One moon. One moon. Are there multiple moons? We don't know. He flies up and it's... It's very much uh, his coming back panel. Yeah, but then the but then the cover story happens, and then he finds stuff there. Yeah, and then he just kind of sits there. But let's talk about that panel and what it means because he's using the arc maxim to go beyond into the space of the kami. He believes. Yes, and he the makes it endless verse, as it were. Now, yeah, if you don't know universe. what verse means, it's the Skypean word for rubble coming up. Yeah. Into Skypea via jet streams, and that's kind of his goal to f- to bring down Skypea back into the sea, and for him to be the only person, above yeah. everyone else as the Kami. Yeah, he's got a kind of a god play. Go- that's his. That's his real, character. Yeah. It's it's strange for One Piece, but we'll go with it. Um, do we wrap up? Uh, Nolan. Yeah. It, about Nolan. You know, it's this emotional scene where Nolan comes back to the island. Six years later. Yeah. And he's a year late. Skype is up on, in yeah. the sky. Uh, Shandora is up in the sky. And we see a nice house, perfectly sliced in half. I mean, it's, it doesn't make any sense, but it's for thematic purposes, right? Yeah. It's for a little, little hint as well. And we kind of deduce that at the start of Skype here, because we found the other side of the house. Mm. It's very, yeah, it's there. Yeah. And it's kind of... Oda's using, he's, he's trying real hard to explain the science of Skypea this entire time. Talking about density of clouds, talking about... Well, that's the thing, right? It's science versus... Yeah, it's science versus superstition, which is the theme of the arc, but... Slash colonialism versus personally, tradition. if we didn't have... Look, I'm, I'm fine with a magic sky island being there, mm. right? I, didn't, I don't need intense detail on how it works, you know? I mean, people complain we didn't get that information for Fishman Island. Right. No one knows how Fishman Island works. Okay. It's, it's a mess. How long is Fishman Island? Uh, one, two, three. I think it's about four volumes. Four volumes, so like half of Skype up. Yeah. I'd say you'd get an additional two volumes if Oda went into details. The two vol. That's 26 chapters? I, I literally read Skype here two days ago or yesterday I finished it mm. and there's so much explanation on everything right. even during like the middle of the fight how his like, weapon works yeah. how my weapon works and what damage this does to me and this is ten times stronger than that dial some people love that stuff man yeah it's interesting 
I would like to see something like that on a hockey. We'll probably get that soon ish. Probably never. We'll probably never get that. We'll probably get it at the yeah. end. Otis, Otis, we'll Otis just wants to do whatever just, he wants. We'll just piece it together. Yeah, well. The community's kind of already pieced together. I don't think there's kind much of. going on. It's not as Otis, complicated as people think. I think it might be. It, Otis could do anything he wants with it because I mean, he has it's it not, defined it. It's not fucking Nen. No one under. No one understands Nen. It's right. so complicated. Right. No one understands it. And if you, it. ladies and gentlemen, you don't know what Nen is, it's a the, power, the power system from Hunter Hunter. 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 It's so complicated, no one really understands it. They're like, it's like, all right, oh, that man. makes sense. Oh man, it's so deep. It's so good because it's so deep. I'd challenge anyone to explain it to me. It's it's very confu- it's confusing. It, apparently, it all works out. Speaking of Hunter Hunter, you know how he does those massive panels with text. Hmm. Sometimes it, Sky Pierce starts off kind of like this. In the shack with the uh, with the girl and the old man talking about the dials. Anyway, dialogue chapters have to. What else is there in Sky Pierce, Christian? We kind of covered most of it. I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Maybe the ah yes, the poneglyph. The poneglyph. The poneglyph. Yeah. Now the poneglyph is referring to uh, Poseidon. Mm-hmm. Robin's kind of disappointed because she wants to know the history, but she finds out a lot about Poseidon. Now, Oda likes to do these things with Poneglyphs where Robin says, it's about this, dot, 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 no more information. Oda is keeping his card, c- cards close to his chest. Do you think he's fleshed out the world history yet? Or he's kind of piecing it together himself as we go? Do you think he knows he know, it? No, he knows intense it. Intense detail. This, yes. I'm talking about character names. I'm talking about key players. I'm talking about... Yes. What happened. Yes, yes. Because I... Let me... Cause he, I'm, let me I'm dive sure, deep I'm, into the way... I do. I, I write my own comic, right? Yep. I'm chapter twenty eight, and I've fleshed out the entire backstory of the whole world. Yeah. It's a way to anchor the world down. Yeah. So you know what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, and what's gonna happen, and what's gonna happen in the overall grand scheme of things, and the end game. So you can. It's so you can drop, drop hints, drop details here and there. Yeah. And you have it all worked out. It's all ready to go. And you can draw from that law that you've got. Yeah. That no one else knows. Yeah. yeah. You can pull from that law. It's, it's, it's a very important technique in, in writing a massive universe. Yeah. You need to have your base. So you can pull from it. Pull from that. Yeah. He's, so, I reckon he's already got it all down. So it's intense. You think, how much detail is there? I reckon he's got tomes of information. Books and books. Like a whole novel. It's just Cause Age of Kingdom. When we saw him in an interview, I don't know how long ago, he had the book on Whole Cake, the book a dragon on Dragon. Book. A dragon book? What is that? Is I that think, Reverie? Think, is that Reverie? I think people have forgotten that book. Is that re- is it the Reverie book? Is Dragon turning out had, the Reverie? And we had Zoe. Yeah. And, yeah. So, those three books, those three arcs. I reckon he's got a fucking volume thick tome. Of the Age of Kingdom just for himself. I remember seeing the size of the whole cake island and it was about... It was probably bigger than that volume size. Mm. Yeah, but it's got drawings and character art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not full text. It's not like a book. No. But... So we think the Void Century is fleshed out and there to be found. Do you think it can be pieced together with the information we have at the moment? Are we missing something as a community? Do we need to investigate deeper? I think it's already... We've mined everything we've got, man. I think there's a key problem... This, thing, this, this information has been around for 10 years. I'm going mm-hmm. to talk about a key problem that I found with rereading this arc. Official Pe- translations? Official translations. Pe- people, people that own these are volumes, people. So when theorists go back and reread arcs, they're rereading scanlations. Incorrect things. And anime as well. The anime's incorrect. The anime's so- off. Off, off. Yeah. But it, is that canon? No. So, I think... The key to unlocking the secrets of One Piece is reading the official translations. Yeah. Now, now we understand that translations aren't translations. I'm pretty sure you'd have to be Japanese and read the manga to, to be hundred percent to be fluent hundred percent and know the the exact meaning Oda meant. Yeah, and the translator before Stephen is not as good as Stephen. Yeah. So it could be it could be off. Right. We don't know. You know Zolo. You know, he uses Japanese words randomly. Yeah. The guy before the current translator, so... And I also want to talk about what Roger actually stated on the Poneglyph. Let me just find This it. is highly contested, because I don't reckon it means what he thinks I it hereby means. guide this document to its end, Pirate Gold D, Roger. And Robin deduces 
Yeah. That this Poneglyph's purpose has already been fulfilled and the knowledge has been passed to the end, Raftel. But th- that implies so many things. It implies that wherever um, Roger has found a Poneglyph, all that knowledge is at Raftel. But that means he had to go to Raftel and then come back and write all his messages. I think it's kind of like him ticking off a list. Like every time he sees one, he goes, I have been I here. I have been here. This document has fulfilled this purpose. And this frees the Shandori from their lifelong purpose of protecting, protecting the Pony Protecting the Pony Yeah. But for him to say that it's at its it's finished, I've done it. Yeah. That means he had to go to Raftal and then do another journey to the ground line. To write to chisel well, all those Robin asks messages. Gandalf if he knew Roger and he said yes, he was here around twenty years ago. Yeah. So people I'm just gonna Was there reason, any Pyro King? Uh it wasn't stated. Yeah. But it's weird. The timeline's kind of fuzzy. We know that he went on a journey after he was diagnosed to become the Pyro King. He yeah. was he he became Pyro King and then I believe he went on another journey. To finish the Grand Line. To probably do all this point with shit. Right. And he left his crew behind. To go on his final journey. I wanna reread Skype here. It's weird it's weird. Not Skype. I wanna reread Shabondi next. Yeah, because it's it's both Shabondis. Yeah, post and pre. Yeah. Mm. To kind of gain the information that we need to kind of piece all this. We'll, we'll do Shab- we'll do Shabondi because I love that arc. Yeah. We'll do Shabondi next time there's a break. Yeah. So we'll you do want to do sh- we'll both read it. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I have to reread Shabondi. Get the key yeah. information down. We'll take different notes. It's not that long either. Yeah. yeah. It's like four volumes. So I just want to I just want to say the quote again. So people remember it. I hereby guide this document to its end, Pirate Goldie Roger. I'm pretty now, sure you're just saying I approve of this message. Yeah, people, people. I hear people all the time say that on the Poneglyph in Sky PA, it says you're on the right track, Goldie Roger. Kind is saying that. People are saying it's a direct message to who, whoever reads this. You're on the way to the One Piece, and that's not what it's saying. It kind of is though. All Context- it's, contextually, all it's saying yeah. is, I, I've, I've approved this. I've I read this, pon- this message. I've read this poneglyph, and I've, and it's fulfilled its purpose. That's what he's saying. Yeah, but he has been to Raftal. Yeah. So these poneglyphs. Well, we need a, I think, a key markers of that. I think we clearly. need to know more about Roger's journey to make a clear conclusion. Mm. So we'll read Skype here, not Skype. I keep on saying Skype here. We'll read Shabondi, both of them. Uh, next Both break. Alright, yeah, okay. There's little details on Rayleigh yeah. at the start. Mm-hmm. So, of the first and that, time. That, I, love, I love that arc, it's a great arc. Yeah. So, yeah. anything else on Skype here, Christian? Any final thoughts? Anything we think? What? what right, wrap up, wrap up. What, right. do you, what do you take from Skype here that people may miss? The the true, me- the meaning, the deep message in Skype here, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, really fan- I think this is the best arc he does the message. Right. Because Oda always has a theme, a message in his arc. And this is a philosophical message. Yeah. He doesn't, he never answers it. Right. He just gives you both sides and he tells you to figure it out. Yeah. It's, it's really, he does a really good job of that right. in this arc. The story itself. There's maybe issues, but I don't think they're issues. major. I just think it's One Piece. Like, he loves to go in depth. Yeah, See, but he, he's got to stop putting Luffy in snakes. Yeah. One Piece is about. The exotic islands. Mm, and when he focuses right. on the exotic islands, people get upset. They want the fights. I mean, it's important for the texture of the arc. What, Christian, what percentage would you give to the community that understand what One Piece is and what they want it to be? I think most people get it. Yeah. And the loud minority. I wonder if, It's about, you know, the deep forum goers, the trolls... People, people who are deeply passionate. Now, Christian, I know we do. They a, think too much. I know we always talk about how strong characters are on this podcast, mm. but I mean, there's a whole segment based on. It. There's a whole segment, and we'll get to that in a minute. Mm. But do you think people are too worried about power scaling in One Piece? Yeah. Forget, forget the adventure. I don't. It's a shown in battle series, yeah. so fights are important. Because I found myself kind of feeling two ways about Skype PR. 
Very not. It's a good adventure, and it drives home the message of dreams, adventure, that kind of thing about One Piece and treasure. Yeah. I got a real understanding and grasp on what treasure means to the crew, what it means to pirates in general. With it's Bellamy. a very good pirate arc. It's a very. It's a classic pulp adventure. They love gold. Mm. I'm not sure if the the theme of treasure ever comes up again apart from Nami occasionally. I mean, Luffy's treasure is his hat. Yeah, right? that's like the first East treasure. Blue saga, right? Yeah, but he also loves gold in this arc. Yeah, they all love gold. They're Zoro pirates. as well. They're pirates. Come Do on. you think we'll get more gold related things before Holy Raftel? So you think Raftel is going to be the end? Of, like, it's the end, but do you think it's going to be the first thing we see in the post time skip, kind of talking about gold? Talking about treasure. Talking about actual physical treasure and what it means to be a pirate. Because it kind of, it kind of, Dyer specifically goes on the theme of what it means to be a pirate. I think Oda's thing about One Piece is freedom. Yeah. It's all about freedom. Don't stifle anyone's freedom it's all about freedom really yeah I don't yeah so being a pirate's about being free I just want to know a few things of how Skypea ends up and how it is uh, at this point in time mm. Gandalf is Kami again mm-hmm. and peace seems to be flowing through, through the, land. the land now I'm pretty sure they're going to probably populate um, Shandora because there's the Skypea got destroyed by uh, yeah I know. so do we think the Skypean race will be involved in the story anytime soon. No, they're done. They're done. And we... Come back. It's quite obvious that Enderu is going to come back. Yes, well. he will come back. When? Elba probably. Lining Fruit. Do we, think, know, do we think the tree goes into a sky island on Elbaf? We see a uh, tree in the flashback with Big Mum. We already did the Jack and the Beast dog thing. Yeah, but... It's, it, a, it's Norse mythology. It's yeah. Norse mythology. Right. It's, it's the tree of life... Yeah, Yadrasil or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Do you right. think the royalty lives on top of the tree? Probably. Odin. Ooh. Thor. Thor. Loki. I'm, I'm interested to see how he handles Thor. Because he's already done the lightning thing. Surely Enru comes back and he's Thor. So you you think... Prince... Maybe he's maybe he's chilling on Alba for two years. So you think... Does that make sense with Lola? Oh, what do you mean? Because he's talking about his brother Thor and Loki. When they're marrying. When Lola's marrying Loki. Maybe Enru killed Thor. Who cares? I want Enru back. Right. That's all I want. I want Enru back, please. Do you think Do you think the royal family of the giants going to be gags or are they going to be hype? Hype. It's it's more it's North mythology, dude. They're yeah. not going to mess around with the royalty. Alright, so do you think we're done with Skypea? Skypea, we've give talked it, about it for over an hour. Do you want to give it out of, out of 10? Out of 10... That's hard. Art, I think it's 9 out of 10. Yep. Themes, 8 out of 10. Yep. Overall story, 7 out of 10. It kind of drags. So about 8. About an 8, yeah. I'd, yeah, I'd give it an 8 as well. It's it's a good arc. Solid. Pacing's a little bit meh. But for it's those out there arc. who love the arc, I'd encourage I you like to arc, actually yeah. reread it instead of re it's, it's got problems. It. it has problems. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Moving on to How Strong Is Shanks? How Strong Is Shanks? What do you have for us today? Of course, we all know Shanks is the God King. That's how strong he is, right? And we already mentioned uh, Oda being like Shanks. Oda is the allegory to Shanks, right? So, what I have for you this week is a very, very good... Evidence of why Shanks is a god king, right? Yeah. So we have that scene after Dress Rosa, where Kid, Killer, yeah. Hawkins and Apu talk about taking down Shanks. Right. And what happens, Eric? Kaido is summoned out of the sky. The mere mention of Shanks. The mere mention the, of attacking a Shanks. A demon. Mere mention of attacking Shanks summons Kaido. Right. From the sky. To destroy them. Because they even... Blaspheme. Talk about knocking out Shanks. Like, it's actually They're going to take out... They're going to kill Shanks? What is that about? What? Crazy. And then, and then Kaido just like, no, it's not happening. You're not killing Shanks. Now, do, you, do, you, do you think this goal will eventually, like, kind of take form? Or is it just nah, dead at the nah, bottom? Nah, they're dead down. Are they're they going to try and take on Shanks and fail? 
Obviously, they I can't mean, beat him. No? Do what, we, they got kid? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we're going to... We're going oh, we're we're gonna, to, we're gonna, like, hear about it in the paper how they got fucked up after Kaido. We'll probably just find out in Wano. Right. Yeah. Well, that's how strong Shanks is. He's so strong, people talking about killing him summons Kaido. Right. That's how strong he is. Uh, we'll see you next week for how strong Shanks is, but we're moving on. Power scale, interesting uh, how it's panned out the last. Yeah, yeah. I seem to always choose the weak weeks. characters. You always seem to choose the strong and characters. And I always seem to give you the last word because it's, it's your kind of thing. I mean, and it's not my fault you have weak opinions. You're a very strong opinion man, very stubborn man. I mean, what you have really you convinced me? What have you bought for. Uh, first of all, re-read, you know rereading Sky Pia. Yeah. I'm going to say. And Ruru is exactly where I place him. Exactly. Exactly where you have him on this list. Perfect power scaling per- here on the Red Force podcast. Perfect. You know why? Because I know my stuff. His physical endurance is pierce weak. Yes. He gets knocked out by an impact dial. He dies by an impact dial. Please, give me a break. I'm pretty sure Oda at the start of the series was saying Logie is OP, but... Uh, before before I forget, just one more thing about Skypea. What? Sea Prism just magically appears. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it later. All right. Since Sea Stone Prism's a whole different thing. All right. So, yeah, I'd just like to say Enner is placed nicely. People would probably place him ridiculously high, but, you know, it's perfect. It's good. Go. First, twice. Who do you got? Now, I've gone Mihawk. You've gone Rayleigh. I've gone Rayleigh. Thoughts on who do you think I'm going to pick this week? Oh, it's probably an Admiral, probably some, I don't know, like Scott or Gabon. Now, maybe I've given you a hint already this uh, this uh, episode. Mont Blanc? I want to talk about Mont Blanc Nolan. Nolan. What do you think? He's very impressive. He's impressive. He's ve- he's, he's ventured in the new world and come back. Um, That's crazy. Yes. He sliced so there might the be There might be... A timeline issue and maybe a little bit of recording with no Nolan because he gains permission to enter the grand the new world yeah but he's executed before he actually goes but he's been to he's been he's been to, to Green Dress Rosa somehow but we'll we'll, we'll we'll let that go maybe I'm wrong maybe you can maybe you can correct me there was six years between. Yes, but they want yeah. to go on a new expedition to... He finally got approved for a new expedition. Yeah, but we don't... Yeah, a new expedition. We don't know to, if he... He says to finally enter the new world. So... Uh, well, if that's inconsistency, I can't do much about maybe that. Maybe it's a translation, but I don't know, but he like... Has, he has entered the new world, obviously. He has. Uh, if you want to correct me on that, just find me at, at Eric Tolado on Twitter. It's weird, it's weird, it's weird. Or email us at... The Red, Red Force, Force Podcast, Podcast at gmail.com. But where would you place? Middle. Smack bang in the middle. Middle Hody Jones. Interesting take. Cool. I reckon. Do you think he's strong? He, he's he's strong, but he's not that strong. He's durable as he's he's very durable. Yes. Crushed by a rocks. I mean rocks. For for a week. And un- not a week, for like a day underneath. Yeah. Rocks. He couldn't escape, which is probably... Yeah, that's issue. why he's there. The cut against the snake, very impressive. And holding his own against Kalgara. Kal- Kalgara, the strongest person ever to live in, in the Shandora. Shandori lore. Yeah. So... But it is the Grand you, Line. You put him in the middle, it's the Grand Line, you know... I think it's fair. I think he's stronger than a PX. Yeah, I reckon he could beat it. He could probably... I reckon I, he's in the middle tier. That Slash is very impressive. Slash is impressive, but... He's stronger than Zoro pre-time skip. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I'm not sure. That snake is massive. Convince me. That snake is bigger than the building it's sitting on. It is pretty big. It's a massive snake. And Luffy couldn't break out of it. From Luffy's the Luffy fits within his eye. Yeah. and That's he how big the snake is. And he couldn't break through... The snake. The snake. That's so, I say, he's strong in the pre-time skip Zoro. 
I'd put him. Yeah, I'd put him middle. Middle? Under Hody. Under Hody Jones. Under Hody Jones, but middle. Yes. Alright, so we agree on something this week. Yay, we agreed. So, what have you brought to the table? It's a very hard one. Here we go. We're it's very hard. It. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting into it on the podcast. It's a very weird one. Yep. Fukuboshi. 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 Now, Christian. Who the fuck is Fukuboshi? I labeled yeah. myself a Dress Rosa baby, maybe the first episode. And, yeah. You know, I've gone on a conquest to kind of correct that that vast mistake. Yes. That plague on the Let podcast. me guess, you know jack shit about it? I don't know dick about Fukuboshi other than he's in One Piece Treasure Cruise. So you're going to have to inform me on this one. All right, Fukuboshi is a prince. Yep. Of the uh, Neptune family. Yeah, I knew that. Um, he's the strongest of the three brothers. Just give me some feats. Feats? He gets defeated by Hody Jones easily. Right. Feats? Is that your feat? Well, he gets defeated easily. He, he's fast underwater. Yep. That's not very good for a fisherman. Yeah. He's got kind of good spear skills with his trident. Right. He has fisherman karate techniques. Yep. That are kind of kind of powerful. Yep. But he's not that strong. So it's an interesting way to put him on the list. Okay. It's very interesting. Because where do you put him? You don't know anything, right? I don't know much. What's his, what's his fighting style like? So he uses his trident. Yep. And he uses his fisherman stuff. Does he have karate or does he have just fisherman moves? I think he has the water bullets. Water bullets. That's all he has. Pretty standard. Yeah. So where are you going to put him? What's his most impressive... He's so weak. What's his most impressive feat you could muster in your mind? He beats like Hody's goons? Like goon fishermen? Like fodder? Yeah. How many? He's... I don't know, like 20? 20. It's not good. Fukuboshi, very disappointing. I mean, the whole royal family is pretty disappointing in Fishman Island. Yeah, yeah, very Is Jinbei the strongest fisherman? Probably. Yes. I mean, Jack's half, but... Jinbei could... Jinbei might fight Jack. People are getting hyped on Jinbei now, but I've been saying this for a while. Jinbei's hype. Yeah. We anyway, Fukuboshi, give us, give us your read. I'm going to say... Low. Now, what have Mr. you got Mr. One tier. Mr. One... Do you think he beats Mr. One? I think he beats Mr. One by the simple fact that he's a fishman and he's strong. Because he's got that fishman strength. Now, surely he loses to Mr. One on land. Yeah, but that, it's a it's a tier, right? Yeah. So, can't really... I don't want to put him against Mr. One. We've got to fill this, these slots, right? Right. We can't just have the low tier be empty forever. So you've chosen Fukuboshi and I've chosen Nolan. Yeah. Do you think people are going to be disappointed with these selections? The whole point of the power scale is to get as many characters on there as possible. Is to put characters there so we can scale correctly. correctly. Right. And why have the tiers if you're not going to use them? Why have the low tiers if you're not going to use them? Exactly. They're there to be used. Do you think we'll ever use the guy on tier again? No, because the guy on tiers will guy one because he's trash. He's worse than trash. Is he just a gag? Yes, he's just a, he's a gag. He's he's a gag. Right. So well, you put him low, Mister One. No, I mean, no opinion, but we'll go No opinion? Alright. Fukuboshi, low tier. Any other thoughts on Nolan or Fukuboshi before we move on, Christian? I think they're very, very good power scaling positions. Right. Because we, we, we can't do hype every week, or we'll run out of characters. Yeah. Yeah. And if you got any issues with the power scale in general, such as Enru's placement... Enru's placement is you can come 100% up, perfect. You can come up both of us this week. Yeah. Right? You can find me at Eric Tolano on Twitter. Christian you can actually Jones. find me this week on Twitter... The man is found. Where can you C spend? underscore Tolado because my name is too long. Too long to fit. Too long for Twitter. Yeah, just like the Rare Force podcast is too long for Twitter. So it's the RF podcast at twitter.com. Yes. Uh, next on the list, Christian. We have topic of the show. Topic of the show. Finally. You, you people are asking for this. Yeah. Where is Sanji? What are our thoughts about Sanji? Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's talk about Sanji. The big, the big elephant in the room when you're talking about One Piece. Right. Are you a San, Are you a Sanji fanboy or you're a Zoro fanboy? Right. Those are the two options. Now, am I gonna bring power scaling to this debate? No. 
Because I don't need power scaling to tell you that Sanji is the third man on the crew. Yeah. You're Luffy, you're Zoro, and then you're Sanji. That's how it is. I don't need power scaling to tell you this. I can tell you from the story. Ladies and gentlemen, he's fired up about this. Sanji is the third man. I love. Now, first of all, we love Sanji. We love Sanji. When Sanji, when Sanji San- stood on the table, it was I was quite, excited. Sanji has my favorite fighting style on the crew. Yeah. I love his fighting style. I love his combo. I love the way he's drawn. Yeah. And those fighting... I love Sanji. We love Sanji. Very kinetic character. We're in the reality of Sanji. Alright? I'm not going to bring power scaling into this because we don't need to. Right. So, what do, you, what do you got? First of all, why Sanji isn't the second man? Because mm. Zoro's the second man. Right. Zoro's so second to join the crew. Right? Yeah. Right hand man. We could draw parallels to Roger. Rayleigh was the first member to join R- Roger's crew. And no one's saying Crack is stronger than Katakuri. Exactly. Because he's the right-hand man. Right-hand man. The structure of the story tells you who's stronger than who. Exactly. That's all we didn't, That's all we're going to say about that. Yeah. The structure of the story tells you who's stronger. Now, do you want to go through your points, Christian? That's the first point. Yep. Sanji is clearly the third guy on the st- crew because he always fights the third strongest guy... In the villain lineup, right? Luffy fights the big boss. Yep. Zoro fights the right hand man. Sanji fights the third guy. Now people say Zoro has an easier time. Uh, it, it, it's irrelevant because it's about it's about the story, right? Yeah. If Sanji was the second guy, he would fight the second guy. All right. So evidence. Kurabui, the guy from uh, Island Park. Yep. Clearly the third man. Yep. Um, Hachi is clearly the right hand man to. Oh, long. Oh, long, yeah. That's not a debate. Right. Zoro's extraordinarily injured. Yeah, he still beats... Takes him out. Easily. Good fight with Sanji, though. I love the mutton shot. Mr. Two, next. Yep. It's in his name. Yeah. You got Mr. One, you got Mr. Zero. Mr. Two. He's the third guy in, yep. in the Baroque's works. Do and Sanji fights him. All right, moving on. All right. Atori? Yep. Or oh, Atori from, from Skypiea? Trash. And that's the only thing... Sanji now, does. I've stated this uh, probably... Uh, I've stated this before, but rereading Skype here, very disappointing for Sanji. He doesn't yeah, do he anything. Does, he's, he might would, as well, would Zoro not do anything? He's, he might as well not be in the arc, ladies and gentlemen. Oda clearly writes Sanji as the third guy. All right, next, Jabra. Jabra's clearly the third strongest in the CP9. Right. Clearly. I'm not getting into this. Right. Clearly. All right, you got Rob Luch. Luffy versus Rob Luch. Zoro versus Kaku. Right. Sanji versus Jabra. Yeah. Sanji's clearly the third guy. Yeah. And then, Absalom kind of, like, remembers the Hogback. It's weird. But he, he doesn't fight the second strongest. Yeah. Zoro fights the second strongest Ryuma. Yeah. Ryuma's on the power scale. You can work it out. Yeah. Alright. Another reason why Sanji is the third man is because of his role on the crew is a cook. Right. He cooks. That's his role. His role right now in this arc is cooking. It's cooking. Is if he fighting? He's all fighting. People say, like, the Sanji-focused arc doesn't even give him a fight yet. Yeah. All right? All right, so, he's cooking. What's Zoro's main job? Fighting. Luffy and Zoro's main job, job is to fight. Is to fight. They are the fighting That's their only part. role in the crew. Zoro is clearly the second man to Luffy. Vice-captain. Vice-captain? I don't care if it, you think it's Usopp. You think it's te- Usopp. It's te- not Usopp. Technically, it's Usopp. I mean... Luffy never agreed to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Sanji's the third man. Another thing, Sanji's role seems to be stealth when he's in combat, right? Right. You got Mr. Prince. Talks to Crocodile. He fucks him around. Yeah. You got Ennius Lobby. When he opens the gates, he disappears for like 10 chapters. Yeah. He opens the gates of justice. He's the stealth guy. Yeah. And the stealth guy is never the second man. Yeah. He's always the support guy. Zoro clearly the second man. Right. Sanji the third man. Luffy main character. Yeah. Pretty easy. No one disputes Luffy is the main character. Right. Zoro very straightforward character. Yeah. Right. He fights people. That's all he does. He wants to be the strongest. Yeah. Sanji doesn't want to be the strongest. That's not Sanji's dream. Yeah. Sanji's dream is to find the old blue. Sanji's dream is not to get. Not to be the strongest. Right. Therefore, easily concluded that he's not the right-hand man. Right. 
Because Luffy wants to be the strongest. Zoro wants to be the strongest. Luffy necessarily Luffy, doesn't want to be the strongest. He wants, he to, be wants the to be the Pyro King. To be the freest. To be the freest, but you have to be the strongest to be the Pyro King, kind of. And Zoro wants to be the strongest. To be the strongest. Swordsman. Yeah, not to be the best chef or to find the East Blue. Sanji's goal is not even to be the best chef, it's to find the old blue. Right. So, that's clearly a dream for a, a support character, right? Yeah. What's Nami's? Draw yeah. a map of the world. Yeah. Joppa, cure every disease. Right? Well, Usopp's kind of t- to become the strongest. Become a great warrior. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got Robin, true history. Frankie, to build a ship. Sail the world. So, their dreams relate to their skill, to their, to to the their skill set. Sanji has no ambition to be the strongest. No. Zoro has the ambition to be the strongest. Zoro has the ambition to be the strongest. Yeah. Zoro takes charge when Luffy's not there. Right. And he's lobby. He takes the group. He fights all the vice admirals. All the, the captains as vice admirals. Yeah. You know, you got very good. Very good. You got all his... Ball man. You got... The Ross stole, man. It was... Uh, Co- who? Dom... 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 Uh, Dalmatian there? I don't think it was. No, I was not remember for it. Yeah, you got all those characters, right? Yeah. Zoro takes charge. He takes charge when Luffy's not there. Yeah. Skypea, it's pretty much Zoro's arc. I mean, Zoro's, Zoro's doing stuff. It's more for Chopper. Chopper's development as a fighter. Yeah, I know. But Zoro does a lot of stuff. Sanji no to be seen. Sanji doesn't do anything. Right? Sanji's clearly the third man. Yep. I don't need power scaling to tell you that Sanji's the third man. And are you, I know you're going to bring up, oh, Sanji, Sanji led the crew against Big Mom at Dress Rosa. Yeah. But he was, he was, the, he's the third man and he's there. Zoro wasn't if, there. If Zoro was there, he would lead it. Yeah. So I think that's a new point. Right. Who took the damage from Kuma? Kuma? Was it Sanji? No. Now people say. Oh, he could have, but he didn't because Oda writes the story. Oda. And Oda's clearly telling us that Zoro's the right hand man because he's willing to sacrifice himself for Luffy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Christian's very fired up about this talk, but I'll just jump in here. Like, the theme of this podcast uh, so far, I think, is a man that exists writes this, writes this story. story. It's, it's not a debate. It's not a re- It's not your own reality in which you think these characters are real. Yeah. Oda makes choices to tell you things. There's no if in what is. Yeah, Oda clearly tells us that Zoro's the right hand man. He's a man that thinks about things. If he wanted Sanji to take it, he would take he really, it. He would have given it to Sanji. If he wanted Sanji to be the vice captain, Sanji would be the vice captain. Exactly. It's if not he, like Sanji uh, would have joined first. If it's, it's not like oh Zoro joined first, therefore he got the position. Oda writes the story. He makes very clear decisions. Yeah. Do you have anything else? What about Zoro backing up Luffy? Against uh, Sanji, against uh, Usopp. Yeah, yeah. Zoro believes in Luffy. He says he believes in the captain. He would never betray the captain unless Luffy stops being the man he admires. Yeah. What does Sanji do in Whole Cake Island? Gives up. He gives up on, on his Luffy. crew. Even Nami doesn't give up on Luffy. Nami never gives up on Luffy. Sanji is not first main material. Has Sanji stated... I love, San- I love Sanji, but he's not first main material. Has Sanji said... Has, has Sanji stated that Luffy will be the Pirate King yet? Because we've had Brook, we've had Nami, Zoro. Yeah, Zoro, yeah. Probably, you, you'd assume Sanji would have said it. I, I think he said it. I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah, he... He, he, falters, believed, he falters in the face of impossible odds where Zoro Where win. Zoro wouldn't... Well, Zoro would never falter. His he consti- would cut his own legs off. His, his constitution is Zoro unbroken. has a stronger constitution than Sanji. Zoro's constitution is unbroken. Yes. Throughout the series. Unless if you want to talk about when he bent the knee to Mihawk. It's for Luffy. Yeah, that's it's true. It's not for him. Yeah. It's for his captain. He wants to get stronger so it's, he can help his captain. He's the vice captain, the second man. And re- recently, Sanji's been used as a gay character. I mean, the pre time skip, post time skip brother has been abysmal for him. It's been terrible for Sanji. Zoro has his gags, but he's not used as a gay character. We've gotten more fleshed out abilities from Brooke in the post than yeah, Sanji. I, I don't just talk about abilities, right? 
Zoro acts seriously throughout the new world. He has his gaze with his direction. Yeah. But he acts seriously. He's a serious character. And he's always telling Luffy to pull his head in. He's, he's trying to get Luffy to do a better job as a captain. Yeah. He's giving him advice. Yeah. Saji never does this. Right. Saji's a gay character what? in arcs. In the post timescape anyway. So, when we... When story we... evidence. Story evidence. Oda would not do this to his right-hand man to Luffy. Right. You think about... Why do you think people talk about... Why do you... Do you think people just say this to justify their love for Sanji? Because I don't think it's required. It's not required to... You, you can, can love Sanji, you can, but you have to be living Sanji can be your favourite character, but that doesn't mean you need to justify his position in the crew. He's... His crew, he's still high up in the crew. He's, he I'm not debating that. Just be content with third. He is clearly the third guy. You don't need to debate speed feats. We've already talked about speed feats. And we're, we're not going to talk about power scaling Sanji here. I don't need to talk about power scaling because the story tells us he's the third man. Yeah. Do you think Sanji and his funny abilities will improve later on in the story? Or do you think this is going to be how it is? Nah, he has... Surely he gets a fight. Please, Oda, give me a fight. Cause I love with, Sanji. With Jinbei coming into the addition. Does Sanji get more, even more sidelined? <sighs> yeah. Well, one is going to be 200 chapters, so everyone gets a fight. So it's fine. I everyone mean, does you've something. said everyone gets a fight. I, I'm, I'm not with you that everyone gets a fight, but I'm with you that Jinbei, Zoro, Sanji get something. At least get a fight. Yeah. That's fair. And you look at the theme or the pattern in other crews, like Shanks' crew, you got, it seems Lucky Roo, Ben Beckman, and Yasup. Are the three dudes behind Shanks? Um, ben so Beckman clearly the first hand man. Ben Beckman clearly the first hand man. Lucky Roo somewhere in there. Yasa probably the third. Yeah. So, I think the power dynamic on the ship's gonna change when Jinbei joins. Mm. It might push Sanji to third, the third Mon- man. Monster quartet. Because, well, it'll be no. the it'll be the Montechiro and the Pirate King. It'll be Luffy's yeah, top commanders. three. And not commanders because he has his commanders but yeah, no, top, I know, yeah but like top, the top, story top three on his crew mm. and he'll be the pirate king yeah but do we Luffy's think he's already pretty big gap between Luffy when you look and at Zoro and you look at Jinbei yeah their role on the crew is to guide, guide Luffy, Luffy on his yeah. journey what every time Sanji doesn't Sanji do reacts to Luffy talking to the females and is, Sanji doesn't give advice he's kind we we learn that Sanji. He's the White Knight. We learn Sanji's kind in his arc that we've told, been yeah. told multiple times that Sanji's kind. Yeah. Is Sanji too kind? It's his character. I'm not gonna. I want to talk about. about that. Do you want to talk about Sanji's character and how it kind of, his constitution is, faulty. In this arc, specifically Whole Cake. Why would you say it's? I would say it's faulty because I'd expect Sanji to believe that Luffy could pull off of these impossible odds. He's been with him for so long. I get that Oda wanted to build tension, that, like, Sanji thinks it's so impossible. If you think about it, he hasn't been with him that long. Six months. I mean, if you think about it, it's not... Yeah, but, like, he's been through almost the entire journey. Yeah. And Brooke has just joined the crew... And, and his constitution is iron in the face of Big Mom. Sanji never even faces Big Mom. It's because... I think it's because of his backstory, really. Because he got fucked up as a child, man. Right. Like, he doesn't believe in people. So, do you think... He Sanji's his constitution death. will become iron after this arc? Yes. After this in arc, Luffy. no more... No more doubting Luffy. Luffy. I think he's already turned that corner, though. Yeah. But, I'd but he imagine, believes in cooking, so... I'd imagine, in reaction to the Big Mom Pirates, Sanji will say, this man will be the Pirate King. Yeah. At the end of the arc. Yeah. Kind of bringing that full circle around Luffy. Sanji doubted Luffy. Now he's back. And now he's back full on board. Yeah. Oh, good. So Sanji, clearly the third man. I don't need power scaling to get into it. All right? Oda's telling us. And the thing we want to drill into the community's head and the goal of this podcast is to understand that this world isn't real. Yeah. You, might, you might think it's real, mm-hmm. right? And you might think it's a living, breathing world, which is Oda's job to do. Very good job of doing it. He has a very good job of doing it. But remember, a man writes this story for a very specific reason. Yeah. If you think this doesn't make sense in the, in the logic, 
of this world. Go back. It does because Oda writes it and it's I very mean, good. I can't use that excuse all the time, but... You can with Oda. He is very clean and very good. Don't, if something... If you have anything, any problems, just go back. This is the... That's this what is, I have to say. This is the thing with Oda. Things might not make sense straight away, but, they but he eventually. cleans everything up to a, to a sheen, to a polish. Everything gets wrapped up. Everything makes sense. All right, most of the time. Most of the time, we don't know. I mean, he has he. Everyone has missteps, man. You can't get everything right. Right, and this is like eight hundred. I will call that out. Chapters. We'll call that out. Nine hundred chapters. Sense. Yeah, Sanji, he needs to show us my. I want to see his what? constitution, and I want to see how how well he fights. How how's your journey been with Sanji throughout One Piece? Has it changed, or has it stayed the same? It started off. Started off like here. Yeah, Sanji. Love his fighting style. He's cool. He's got a cool character design. Yep. And then we go to... I think it started happening around, like, Thrill the Bark. You've cut about 40% off that. Is that re- a, an, yeah, yeah, an, yeah, yeah, a yeah. relevant Thrill scale? Thrill the Bark? Because he went with that whole for the, weird P- Pino thing with Absalon. For the listeners out there, he's got his hand up making a bar motion, and he's dropped about 40% from the top. Yeah. Sanji kind of went weird and threw the bark. It wasn't a very good arc for him. It's kind of being a weirdo. Yeah. And then Shabondi goes up because they had that cool fight. Time skip. Fishman Island, he's just a gag. And now he's come back up. Now he's slowly come back up. I love, I love everyone on the crew. Right? Yeah. We love everyone on the crew here. My problem with Sanji specifically, I don't need him to be the strongest physically. I don't need him to do all these kind of hype fights. What I want to see from every single person on the crew is their unwielding, wavering support of their captain, Luffy. If one person doesn't believe in Luffy, the crew falls apart. I mean, that's that's an interesting point, but you have to have drama in the story, right? You do, but I would have loved to seen Sanji be defiant to the very end. He kind of wraps himself up in a ball. He loses it. It's because he's trapped at every 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 angle, but I, I get it. But I'm just... I, ever, I don't think Zoro will do it. Ever since he got the wedding invitation mm. from Capone... I, I thought he could... He, he thought he could figure he could do it himself. He could handle it. He doesn't want to... See, Sanji doesn't want to hurt others. Yeah. At all costs. He's thinking about Zeph. Do you think me saying this is a bit much? I expect Sanji to care more about Luffy than Zeph. I expect Sanji to care more about... No, that's crazy. That's crazy. He's captain than Zeph. I mean, if you think about it, Zeph, Zeph raised him. Right. Zeph's his father, right? He spent more time with Zeph than he spent with Luffy. But when you think about it, when Ace died, Luffy remembered yeah. that the most important thing is his crew. Is his crew. I expect the same from the crew. I think it's a bit different with Zeph because we know Sanji's backstory. Right. I think he'd be a bit harsh. Because Sanji had like a... He, his dad fucking hated him. He finally gets a good father. He teaches him the ways. He loves him. And it's not like they had a bad relationship. He leaves he leaves to have an adventure. Right. Right? He doesn't leave because he hates his family at the, at the Variety A. Yeah. He leaves to go on an adventure. So, you have a point, but I think it's a bit harsh. Do you want to see this stronger constitution from Sanji moving forward? And will you be upset if he falters again? Yes. He shouldn't falter again. This is his arc to sort out his problems with his family. Yeah. To sort out his issues, yeah. and then he should be on board. Do you think anyone else in the crew will falter at any point? Come on, we can't do this again. We had Robin. We had Robin. We she had... was barely on the crew. Robin was on a ride, and she only really believed in Luffy after, after he shot the flag. After they declared war on the world government for their crew. Yeah. So, we had it with Usopp, and we had it with Nami. Yep. Although you could argue the same thing. With Nami and Robin, because maybe Nami didn't really believe in the Straw Hats until they f- defeated their enemies. Till yeah, they defeated Arlong. In in reflection of those two characters, 
Do you think it's far too late in this series for Sanji to have this similar arc? Spat. Do you think it's too late for him because of his position in the crew? It's too late. No, it's never too late. Like, do you, would, think... you, would you expect something like this to happen at the start of his arc when he joins the crew as apart from this late in the game? Well, it's Where only because he's been faulted. running... It's only because he's been running from his family for so long. Right. So, okay, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. I'm just... Again, I know why Oda's done it. It's to build his character. Mm-hmm. But it disappoints me that Sanji doesn't fully believe in Luffy. Uh, well, he will now. Yeah. Oh, he already does now. So, final thoughts of Sanji... We love Sanji. We love him. He, he, I'd say... But he's not... He's not... He's not... He's not right hand material. He's dropped significantly for me... Because it's hard. Because of this faltering of his character. I think that's harsh. You know... I'm, I love... I, I love loyalty to the crew. Yeah. It, it, it requires to be there. If you're going to be on this journey of life and death. I think that... Yeah. Alright. I think that's harsh, but I, I see your point. Yeah. Alright, so... Sanji clearly the third man. We don't need power scaling. We have story evidence. Come at us on Twitter if you want. You know, I know the, I know the king... I know the king Uru. King Uru. The king Uru of Lightning has very strong opinions of Sanji. Right. But well, I don't, I'm not getting into power scaling. It's more, of a, it's, it's more of a writing thing than a power, power scaling thing. Like, yeah, that's why we're not bringing it up because it's, hard, it's too hard to tell right now. Because we talked about this last week that speed feats are impossible to gauge. Pretty much, unless it's in a one-on-one and they give stats. And Specific stats. Yeah. So, final thoughts on this week, Christian? And what are you looking forward to next week? I want that Katakuri versus Luffy fight, baby! Round three? Round three. Now, we suspect he's been in the mirror world for three hours now. Yeah, Because he got in there at six. It's nine yeah. now. So, we'll see. I'd expect Big Mum to do something crazy this week. I said it last episode. Yeah, you did. Big Mum's going to do something insanely crazy that will turn the community <laughs> on, on its, its head, head once more. What is that? It's going to be a slash that's crazy, that's going to bring up discussions about Mihawk, that's going to bring up discussions about the other Yonko, it's going to bring up discussions Emp- Empress. about, you know, it's going to bring discussions about how are these... Characters are going to be defeated. Everyone's going to turn a full 180. And then, following chapters after, everyone will turn a 180 yeah, again. Yeah. And then, 180 again. It's a pendulum. It just swings Guys, this is how it works, alright? You get hype for the villain, and you get de-hype for the villain. Etc. Until the villain's defeated. Yes. We talked about this last week with Whitebeard, etc. 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 Um... Anything on the horizon that you're looking forward to in 2018? Wow, well, there's a lot. I think... Uh, just, Do you want just, to talk about that next week, Topic we'll of the Show? We'll just say that Topic of the Show. So, right? This podcast is like two hours long. So next week, Topic of the Show will be expectations or 2018 hopes. 2018 hopes. 2018 hopes. I hope you join us for that. Uh, where can the people find you, Christian? Find me at Talada Comics. Read my comic, Shadow Soul. I just put out a new chapter. Uh, find me on Twitter, C underscore Talado. You can find me on Twitter at uh, at Eric Tolado. You can find the podcast on Twitter at the RF Podcast. You can email us at the Red Four Podcast at gmail.com. Yes. We want to take theories from the communities, topics of the show from communities, Send questions. Us Send us we stuff. might do a question segment, maybe. Yeah. You get enough questions, we'll, we'll do a question segment. Just and send us stuff. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, support the official release. Support the official release, and thanks to the people who watched the show last week. Yeah, we good had big, a nice big update, turnout. probably about 400 views by now. Probably thanks to the King Who. People retweeting, I appreciate that. Uh, Greg Summer, hope you're watching. Greg, yeah, I love Greg. Greg, Greg. Give, us, give us the secrets to One Piece. We Greg know you, has all the secrets. We know you have all the secrets. Thanks, um, Greg. We, we appreciate the support that we've been getting. This is a passion project for us. We, just do, it we do it in our spare time. And I'd imagine we'll keep doing it every week until One Piece finishes. Uh, that's a commitment. So. That's, so. a commitment. that's a commitment. I'm going to keep that commitment. You are. Every, every, every week. week. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be releasing Tuesdays. Well, for us, we're recording on Tuesdays. When it actually releases in the US. Now, that's a different story. Australian internet, very bad. It takes yeah, me a long... Takes- 
long, long night to upload. Long, long time to upload this podcast to YouTube. Yeah. So I'm working on all the SoundCloud and stuff. Hopefully to get this as an audio. Hopefully we've fixed Christian's mic. Is it fixed? It should be. Let us know if it's fixed. I mean, we should know. We will, we'll find out. It's Hopefully it's fixed. Are. I didn't spend all this money and this equipment for it not to be fixed. <laughs> um, yeah. any, anything else before we wrap it up? Which, no, that's it. Thanks, thanks for watching. Yeah, Have a good week. We appreciate the support. And uh, till next time, what, 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 what tagline are we going to do, Christian? Uh, Shanks is the gold king. Shanks is the gold king. Do, can we help with something better? Shanks Maybe something about sailing the seas of the Red Force or something? I don't know. No, Shanks is the God King. Join us on the Red Force podcast. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Righto, let's get all this shit together.